From Earth, stars can look very similar to each other, just a bunch of bright twinkles of light. But if you look carefully, you'll see that the stars are a whole array of different colors. And people have noticed this range of colors in the stars for a long time. In the first century BC, Chinese astronomers recorded the star Betelgeuse in the Orion constellation as having a white or yellowish hue. But many centuries later, in the year 150 AD, Egyptian astronomer Ptolemy noted the star's ruddiness, or red color, which is the same color it exhibits today. While this may seem like a simple observation, this change in color over time actually indicates that the star went through a major change in its life cycle. In general, noting the color of a star can tell us so much about its age, temperature, and even its chemical composition. A good place for us to begin is by understanding what color actually is. No, I promise I'm not going all philosophical on you. I'm talking about how we characterize the color of a star in astronomy. It's all about electromagnetic radiation, a form of energy that's all around us. This energy travels in waves and is generally separated into seven categories depending on the frequency and lengths of these waves. On one end of the spectrum, we have the quick bursts of gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet radiation. In the middle, we have a slim spectrum of visible light. These are the colors we can actually see. And on the other end are the longer, slower wavelengths of infrared radiation, microwaves, and radio waves. So the visible light we see as colors is really only a small fraction of the electromagnetic waves generated in the universe. It's useful then that stars emit most of their energy as visible light. Think about turning on a gas stove. At the bottom where it's hottest, the flame burns blue and white. And up at the top of the flame where it's cooler, it burns yellow orange. It's the same with stars. The hotter the star, the more blue white it is in color. Similarly, the cooler the star, the more orange or red it appears. Astronomers use a sort of thermometer for stars. Though stars emit multiple colors of wavelengths at one time, the dominant color will win out and be a good indicator of its temperature. And it's a sliding scale too in terms of what other types of electromagnetic radiation a star is giving off. The energy can slip into wavelengths that are invisible to the naked eye, which is why it's super useful to modern astronomers to be able to capture different types of electromagnetic radiation. They do this using different types of telescopes. For example, to detect the hottest, most energetic stars, or the hot glow of a stellar nursery, you'd need to filter for ultraviolet. There are other factors besides temperature that affect a star's color, including the distance of the star from Earth and the elements it's made of. So each element within a star is associated with a specific wavelength. By measuring the amount of energy at those wavelengths, we can tell the amount of hydrogen, helium, and other various trace elements that are in a star. This technique is called spectroscopy. One way to see all of the individual wavelengths is to pass a star's light through a filter on a telescope that takes out all the other kinds of light. The James Clerk Maxwell Telescope does this in its own way, by selecting very specific wavelengths to observe. It specializes in those at super low energy. So we're looking at the reddest, deeper than the reddest red that any human could ever see. So we see things that are cold in space or don't emit a lot of energy, at least nearby. So the two things that we really specialize in are the formation and birth of stars and planets, looking at the gas and dust between the stars that gives birth to new stellar systems. And we also specialize in looking at galaxies that are very, very far away uh, near the beginning of our cosmic history to figure out where all of these large scale galactic structures in our universe first come from. There's a variety of different sort of hidden universes that are out there when we look up at the night sky. Our eyes only pick up a very small sliver of the total light that's actually coming in. We need specialized instruments to see some of the physical material that's out there, and it emits at these different wavelengths. It's amazing how a different filter or even type of telescope can completely change our perception of the night sky. There's actually a good example of this that you can try for yourself. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a very famous star you can find in the constellation Cygnus called Albireo. You can find it at the beak of Cygnus, which is also the bottom of the Northern Cross. To the naked eye, Albireo appears as a bright white star, but this is deceiving. With a simple telescope or even a steadily held set of binoculars, you can see that Albireo is actually two stars, one blue and one gold. 
but again, when seen together with just your eyes, it appears blue-white. It's an incredible example of how a pair of very differently colored stars can shift in appearance depending on how we view them. Also, fun fact, that gold star is actually also two stars. So the next time you have a chance to look at the night sky in a good light pollution free place, look for Albireo in the Northern Hemisphere. But if the timing or location isn't right, every star has a color. Some are white, blue, orange, yellow, or red. Thank you so much for watching this video about the colors of stars. My name is Serafina Nance and this is Seeker Constellations. If you have an astronomy related question or an idea for an episode topic, let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.